Here I thought the head is a little too small, so it just kind of increased the size a little bit. But throughout this painting, I always thought the head bugged me a little bit because it didn't give me enough scale for some reason. And uh, I do try to change it here. As you can see, I added like a couple eyes and those kind of things. But in the back of my mind, something was bugging me about it. And in general, if the thing that bugs you comes up, say, three, four times in a row in your brain, just tells you, hey, this is not right. This is, no matter how you correct it, it bugs you, like it's not working. Then at that point, you should probably trust your gut instinct. It's telling you that, hey, maybe you should change it. And that's what I did here with his face. So as I painted other details, like his body and his arms and stuff, that head didn't feel complete to me. And that factor alone slows the painting down because your brain is constantly thinking, okay, how do I correct this head? How do I change it? Uh, Why are you trying to paint details like these legs and things like that. Um, so uh, you'll see me probably in a few minutes here that I'm going to actually erase out the face part and change it to another design. So those are kind of things that you learn over time to just trust your gut. Now, your gut is usually quite right about things. So um, if those things come in, then just change it. It's digital anyways. And sometimes you'll find that by changing it, which in this case I did, it actually speeds up the working process because you feel more confident about the painting or the design as a whole, uh, allowing you confidence level and then therefore increasing speed. So here I'm still trying to paint the arms and stuff, but while I'm doing this, because the, the body is quite easy to paint, the little arms and little hands and stuff. See, you can see I'm constantly trying to go back to the face to see, is it working? Is it, you know, is, is it going to you know, read well? And to me, it, I just didn't like it. It felt too much like a skull. And uh, it didn't, the scale just didn't work for me as I painted this. Right. The eyes felt a little too big. Um, the mouth felt too humanish as a skeleton, uh, while the body is very bug-like. So uh, that that part of me would just constantly bug me as I painted this. So, but I still try to live live it on, right? So this is probably the third time I went up there to change the head, uh, but then very soon I'll be like, it's not working. So, and because this is such a quick painting, there was no layers or anything, so it became uh, the only way to change it is to delete the entire face. Uh, this is all painted pretty much on one layer and using the uh, default brush, but which by the way, you know, a lot of people are asking for the brush, the one I'm using right now, it comes with Photoshop, you don't need to share or whatever, find this brush on the internet, just load it up, uh, you know, this is Photoshop CS1 actually, so I, I already have this brush in, the, uh, in this, and I think in the newer versions, you have even better versions of this brush, which is just a, some kind of natural dry chalk or something like that, it comes with a natural media brush uh, as part of Photoshop. So that's what I'm using for 99% of this painting. The only thing that's uh, not default is the, probably the, the brush, the, uh, the fog brush that I use, which is just a noise version of the soft airbrush. That's all. So more details. Uh, the body's starting to work for me. I think you know it's reading like a kind of slippery, that kind of bug uh, material. Super quick. The resolution of this image is about, it's not that big. At, at some point, I think I resed it up, but I think it's about nine times four, so 3,600 tall. So not super high res, but enough to get enough details uh, in there. So here I'm experimenting with the eye, but still not working. You know, He just kind of looks silly. Um, didn't have that serious look to it. Um, I changed it to this eye design for a while, which kind of worked. Uh, so I stuck with it for a while. Uh, but end of the day, we still had to uh, alter it. Black and white check, line it up with level adjuster. All right, desaturate a little bit, it was getting a little too orange. So these things are just, uh, you can keep these on adjustment layers in Photoshop. So just in case you want to reverse your uh, your thought process or get it back to saturation, just uh, tone the layer down or change the opacity. So mostly I have a, uh, pretty much one or two layers that I paint on, and then all above those layers are adjustment layers like color balance, um, level adjust, saturation. Those are kind of things that you keep on a layer. So here I'm starting to do the background a little bit. I was timing myself to do this because I had a meeting coming up uh, when I was doing this demo. Basically, I had to finish uh, by 3.30. I started this at 2 o'clock. Um, so I was under a little bit of time pressure to finish, but, which sometimes is a very good exercise to do. Uh, even when I was in uh, school, I used to time myself. I used to have a clock uh, basically on my, on my um, desk. And as I work, I just look at it to see how long something will take. Uh, because especially if you're going to go into a freelance world, or even if you're working full house, uh, full time, it's really good to know how long it takes to do something. So you could then estimate your time of day, how you're going to spend it. So again, this is more of a production thing. Uh, versus you start a painting with no idea how long it's going to take you or how many days you're going to take to finish it or whatever. Um, a little bit more dangerous when you're freelancing. In-house, probably a little better. But when you freelance, clients generally want to know when are you going to turn something in? Or they have a demand like, hey, it's due Friday, and uh, right now it's Thursday. Then you know how much time you have and how, what kind of quality you could achieve uh, within that time limit. So for this painting, it just timed an hour and a half. So basically, you have to stop the clock at 3.30 p.m., that is. 
So I'll continue working on the hands. So this way, the time thing is important because say I have five hours on this thing, then I probably would have slowed it down a little bit, maybe work on the head, try a different version. Um, even on the black and white sketch, I wouldn't have rushed it as much. So it all depends. But if you have only, say, an hour to finish something, then you, you work a little quicker, you take some shortcuts here and there. So those are kind of things that just comes with time or experience. This is probably the last time I tried to fix the face and it's not working. So while I saved Camtasia, I then went in and changed it. You see, I'm trying to do some experiments here just to uh, mentally tell myself what we could do with this. Here I'm copying a few more textures in there um, from the bug, the little termite queen uh, butt area. Right? It's got this great texture, this kind of bumpy bug-like material. So I just copy and paste a few of them. Just left it a normal normal layer. They're not any kind of special setting. Um, and just kind of erased it out, soft and softly blended in. That's all. Here I'm actually trying to put that little bug in there as well, just to get these little micro details. Uh, but some of it didn't work, so I deleted it, but I left some of it in. Uh, using texture is great, it's a time saver. But definitely let the let the painting run your painting uh, run your overall image, not let the texture run it. So you can here see here I changed the face really quick. It's a really rough paint. I did it actually while Camtasia was saving, because these are when I'm doing these, it's just saved in the multiple parts. Um, so while I was saving, I had a few minutes. I go, hey, no, I'm just gonna experiment with a different face, and uh, that's the face I got. And I go, hey, this probably works much better. So I changed it. I think mostly. The other one, the reason why it wasn't working is one, the face was a little too big. The eye proportion to the head looked too much like we placed a human face on top of a bug, so it didn't work. So in this case, the scale is much better. The uh, mouth area is a little more detailed, and we have multiple compound eyes that are smaller in scale, therefore allowing the whole body to have a more of an integrated look. It looks like it belongs to the to the body. At this point, also, it just the confidence level goes way up because the design feels much better. And uh, you know, I'm sure a lot of you know uh, what I'm talking about. When you're doing a design, it feels right. Like hey, this one's okay, right? Uh, you actually tend to work a little bit more relaxed. You're not as tense. So here, I'm just working on the mouth, adding some details here and there. So again, if you're painting uh, something that has a character in it, the face is mostly, in general, is the most important part to put your um, details because that is where the human eye is going to go first. So using black and white to balance out the values, some shadows, highlights, lines coming from the from the upper uh, left, and uh, just continue adding details. There's not much to this. This painting is one of these quick ones, and it's fun, very fun to practice these. So if whenever have a time or break, try to do some sketch paintings. You know, to do things fast sometimes uh, results in spontaneous solutions, and that's something that we teach our students here as well. Because not especially in production, you just can't do stuff in like five six days. You know what I'm saying? Everything has to be done quick, um, and doing this fast teaches you methods, shortcuts. So here I'm painting the cigarette. I put the cigarette in, which I mentioned earlier, for scale. Because when I did this, I just you had no idea how big this guy was. Like maybe he's the size of a worm, or maybe he's the size of a building. You just didn't know. So I decided to put in this kind of human-sized cigarette. Then therefore you kind of know how big he is, right? And also it kind of plays up the whole Alice in Wonderland, that kind of uh, that worm guy that smokes some kind of thing. Right? Just to an homage to that design, I guess, since it is a big giant fat worm like the other one. Because I didn't have time to put scale, because it's uh, we could always put a person in the background or a house or something like that to give them a little bit of scale. But in this case, this is a fast solution, I guess, just to paint some cigarette in uh, on them. And it's kind of fun too; it gives them some character. Like this guy's just kicking back in the uh, in the grass, uh, smoking a cigarette, you know, thinking about his day, that kind of thing. Little details: make sure his hand can actually hold the cigarette, all right? And then paint some grass to establish the foreground because he's sitting in the mid-ground, like most subjects, they, they sit in the mid. So we got to give the foreground a little bit of visual pull so your eye can move uh, in between the canvas. And this painting is pretty much done. I'm probably going to sign this really uh, real soon. So it's a quick painting. Um, you know, guys, give this a try. Just use default chalk brush, whatever, and just start painting something, sometimes spontaneous. You know, come up with some kind of theme, I guess, a subject matter, and just start sketching and see where it leads you. Um, so next week, I'll try to do a, maybe a longer one. Maybe we'll do something like this. I have no idea. But uh, uh, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this week's tutorial. And uh, I will see you guys next week. And don't forget to subscribe, ask questions, and all those kind of things. So thanks again, and I'll see you guys next week. All right, bye-bye.